Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another early game playbook video. Uh, today we're playing as Zhang Yan. He is the first outlaw that we're featuring for our early game playbook. Uh, a little bit about Zhang Yan himself. He started out as a bandit in the first wave of Yellow Turban Rebellion around 184. Uh, he built up quite a big group of bandits serving under him and eventually uh, worked his way with government ties and uh, as he helped Gong Sun Zan in, in his war against Yuan Shao. After Gong Sun Zan was defeated, he and Yuan Shao had a couple of skirmishes. Uh, he, he wasn't able to win against Yuan Shao, but he wasn't wiped out either. And when Cao Cao had his campaign against Yuan Shao, he helped Cao Cao out. And eventually after the war, Cao Cao gave him a generalship uh, in the north and had him garrison in Ye. And he served Cao Cao ever since, including his son and grandson. And his great grandson even participated in the War of the Eight Princes, which is part of the DLC, as he served under Sima Lun. Um, a little bit about him in the game. Uh, he is the king of the Black Mountains. He is a champion, excellent duelist, have a very great unique armor that gives him fatigue immunity. Uh, he features uh, campaign specialization. Uh, he's one of the only faction that can improve relationship with the yellow turbans. He also can ambush when, when he's on offense. Uh, it's a quite a unique mechanic. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of it personally because I tend to really hate ambushes because they disable fire well for all your range units and um, I just love range units too much to uh, get a kick out of that uh, but if you play a very melee heavy army composition uh, ambushes give you great gap close and um, it's pretty effective uh, because he specializes in ambushes he has the ability of ignore forest penalties since you start out hiding in the forest in all your ambushes He's also very good at fighting, uh, so 25% post-battle loot income is also part of his passive. He has three different unique units available at level 1, level 3, and level 5. Um, they're just upgraded version of the axe unit, uh, spear unit, and uh, this is a very unique spear, um, um, axe and arrow unit, kind of like the Zor Dragon, but with axe. They all can have guerrilla deployment, and they all cause scare, uh, but they're all very... Uh, bad against range, um, which it's okay because you're playing aggressive ambush style, so they can still be efficient units in the late game. He has one unique specialty building. It doesn't replace any existing building chains. It's an additional building chain that is in the government tree uh, or government portion of the building tree. Uh, this building is very flexible. It has three different variations. There's three branching. One branching gives you public order, additional administrator slots, and improved diplomatic relationship with Han Empire factions. And Han Empire factions are not just the Han. Han Empire factions are all factions that are not Yellow Turban. So pretty much everyone on the map, you have increased diplomatic relationship with them with this branching. Alternatively, you can go with a heavy battle branching where it increases your army limit as well as your post-battle loot income. Or conversely, the third option, uh, this is the worst option, you get diplomatic relationship improvement with yellow turban factions. This is uh, your Gongdu, He Yi, and Huang Shao. And hopefully more factions if they come out with a DLC at the end of the year, which they announced they will. Um, if it's the yellow turban with Zhang Jiao, Zhang Bao, and Zhang Liang, that would be really great as well. But we don't know that right now. Uh, you also get increased spy limit. So I guess you are working your way with yellow turbans while spying on high empire factions. Um, not my preferred playstyle, but maybe you can do something with that. Uh, he honestly doesn't have any noteworthy characters. I don't know why they put these two generic guys here. Uh, they're not great. Uh, so the early game strategy we're going for is definitely not the it's not the only way to play Zhang Yan. It's not even the best way to play Zhang Yan. But in the, for the sake of showing more variety and making an interesting video, we're going to play a very extremely passive style with this early game guide. Um, we're playing passive because we start the map technically in a corner. Uh, because the way the campaign map is drawn, uh, these are all mountains in the back, so we technically have our own little corner that's quite safe. So we can start the first 20 turn or so without worrying about being attacked at all, and we can just focus on building up and setting ourselves up uh, before expanding out. 
Uh, we'll go in detail of how to play this once we go in the game. And once again, we're doing this on Legendary Legendary with 40 minute battle timers. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, we loaded up in here. Uh, we start out with very similar setup as many other factions. Your first mission is to kill the army in front of you. And if we center ourselves, we start in this very mountainous region. Uh, we are king of the Black Mountains. Uh, this is Wu Taishan, Wu Taishan. Uh, very beautiful place in China if you have a chance to go. Um, but we have a starting commandery that's a town. And it has one county, which is the Lumberyard right here. So we're going to grab that. Now you see me fight these early fight a lot where we try to preserve our force to work out a deal. But if you notice, we don't start out with any neighbors uh, that we can negotiate with. So, so much for that. Uh, we're going to do something very different, which we haven't done before. And that is to just delegate these fights. Um, pretty good row in terms of item. Four items, very good. We're going to give these items out. Oh, by the way, the Iron Snake is the item you start out for free. Uh, in all your games, you at least have the Iron Snake. We're going to give him the Rites of Jolt. The extra authority points will help out with uh, satisfaction since he is our faction leader. Uh, the peasantry income is not useful right now. He's not going to be our um, administrator. Uh, we'll give it to him. Might as well. No point to keep it. And he's also on the battlefield. Yudu. Uh, we're going to switch his weapon around real quick. Just give him a little bit extra damage. Um, you don't have to. It doesn't really change anything. Iron Snakes give him extra melee evasion. And that's it. Uh, we don't have to give out any of the item to other people. There's a good reason for that. Because in this very passive start, we're going to get rid of everyone. So let's start out this fight. As you can see, we're on offense. You can get ambushes. You don't get this all the time. Uh, you, this depends on your ambush percentage, so you can definitely pick up those skills that gives you extra ambush chance if you it personally enjoy ambush combat. I don't, um, which it's just a preference. Let's delegate this fight. Alright, grab some money. All right, uh, we got this uh, taste of victory. Our next mission is to grab the lumber yard, uh, gain experience. Um, if you delegate, you automatically get a level up. You start out at level one, so you don't need much experience. Uh, the trait to go for here is flexibility. The extra 25% redeployment cost discount is wonderful. The five plus five percent replenishment is also really good. He's going to be leading your army because you're going to get reach next. So we're going to grab this. We'll talk about all the generals later. We're going to finish up this mission right here. Uh, we're also going to delegate this fight. You can fight it on the battlefield if you want. Uh, you can spam your generals and not lose many men. But I don't really care about the manpower for this playthrough. So let's continue and delegate. Alright. And we're going to just occupy right here. Alrighty. So... Uh, we our next mission is the one where you build a building and your economy gro uh, economy grows 20% uh, discount in construction costs minus one construction time very very key early game uh, bonuses to enjoy and abuse we gain some experience for getting our first commandery and we're at level three which is wonderful uh, we're gonna pick up reach like we said and while we still have an army um, although they're weak we're gonna negotiate with our new neighbor Liu Yu. Obviously, if you manually fight the two fight like we have been doing in our other early game playthroughs, uh, you're going to be able to negotiate a slightly better deal. Uh, it's not going to make a big difference. So I'm just showcasing what happens if you delegate. What do we want with Liu Yu? We want him to be a passive neighbor. He started out with these three commanders right here. He has a very strong neighbor in Gong Sun Zan, and they're going to be fighting each other. He's our buffer away from Gong Sun Zan. And he's going to be our early game trade partner. Uh, minus 0.3, not that bad. Since it's the first turn, you can also take a look at what ancillary items he drew uh, to see if we want to trade for any of them. So that's not that great. Local administrator. 
Mm, decent, but not not game breaking. Builder is pretty good, but we're not gonna have um, administrator anytime soon. All right, so nothing I really want, so that's fine. What I'm gonna offer him is just one of our ancillary item that we're not using, perhaps the clay rat. And we're gonna ask him for some money in return. Uh, if you don't want to give up any of your ancillary item or you drew very few ancillary item, just give him one food, you get plus 1.5 and you'll be able to get a deal that way as well. Um, we're going to ask him to give us a little bit of gold. There we go. And this deal right here will keep him happy. Um, he will never attack you. He will get wiped out before he attack you. Gong Sun San will kill him off eventually. Um, and at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to disband our army because we already did our deal. And not only are we going to disband our army, which we have done quite a few times in uh, whether our Let's Plays or some early game uh, playbooks. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of all our generals. And before we do, I'm going to explain why. So we're going to recall everyone, even Zhang Yan. Alright, we start out with five generals. Zhang Yan, obviously, is our leader. He's great. He has this armor that has fatigue immunity. I really wish the game would make it so that your um, oldest child can inherit your armor once you die of old age because we do start out at 38 without a wife, uh, without a family, poor Zhang Yan. So he, if your campaign goes long, he will die of old age, which is quite sad. He also started out with stubborn, which gives him unbreakable. This combination of fatigue immunity and unbreakable is really, really good. You'll never lose a defensive fight with this combination. So imagine you are you have, as long as you have battle timers, right? If you're playing on infinite battle timer, then it's not going to work in your favor. But assuming you're playing with 60 minute, 40 minutes, or 20 minute battle timers on defense, all you have to do is have Zhang Yan run around the map. They'll never catch you. You're never going to break your morale. And you're never going to get tired. So they can never catch you that way. Uh, if you can give him an excellent horse, it'll make it even easier. But you just outlast them, run out the clock type of game, and you'll never lose a defensive fight. It's a little exploitive, but that's definitely a strategy you can go with with Zhang Yan. His other generals are all generic generals with no one has really good traits, right? No one has outstanding traits in these generals. You might want to argue that these two generals have humble, which is something I really like because it has no desire for higher office. They never get mad at you. But unfortunately, they also have disloyal. And then for him, he also has greedy. And the game doesn't, the, the coding in the game, I don't know if it's intended or not, works like this. This one cancels out all your desire for higher office. So it resets it to zero at all levels. And then this one increases your desire for higher office on top of the canceled. So the no desire does not override the increased desire. So if these two traits both exist, you'll still have increased desire. So it's kind of sad that it doesn't cancel each other out. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, so these generals are all terrible. Uh, we're going to make sure none of them have items. Like this item that we give him early on, we're going to take it away from him. And if we note the satisfaction, 25, 28, 32, and 37. So they're decreasing. So we're going to get rid of them in that order. And we're going to get rid of them using the Banish. Banish dismisses the character, creates a grudge between the character and your faction. So oftentimes you see characters in your recruitment pool that has a grudge against some uh, old faction. They could have been banished. What happens when you banish them is you get money based on their rank. All these uh, characters are rank 1, level 1. So you're only going to get 800 gold. You're also going to cause a five, minus 5 satisfaction faction-wide for 5 turns. Um, but that's fine, because we're getting rid of all our generals. So no one's going to get mad at us for 5 turns, because our faction leader is not going to get mad at himself. So we're going to banish and pick up 3,200 gold this way. And we're going to sit pretty uh, as we play an extremely passive early game start. All right, all these generals are gone. We picked up a nice bankroll. We also don't have to pay their salary anymore. All right, we're gonna build ourselves a tax collection building. We can't do any assignments because Zhang Yan's on his cooldown turn as he was recalled. But afterward, we can go with uh, agricultural exploitation to give ourselves a little bit more food. 
and we can end turn at this point. All right, turn two. Um, so let's see the map. As we said, we have our neighbor here in Liu Yu with three commanderies. We don't have to worry about him. He's not going to attack us. Down here, we have the High Empire and the Yellow Turban Rebellion faction. They're not going to attack us. We have a new neighbor in Zhengjiang. Okay, so she is going to be a little difficult to deal with. She's the other bandit, and eventually she'll be tempted to attack us. But that's going to happen a bit later, and we can try to prevent that by signing a trade agreement with her and by trying to secure a non-aggression pact with her. And another thing to note is that we have characters to recruit. Um, the first five turn, preferably don't recruit any characters because you have that negative satisfaction right now. Um, unless you see someone really amazing. By amazing, I mean if they have the burn trait and if they have the farmer background. I'll, uh, if you want a more detailed look at all these traits and background, check out our traits and background guide. I'll put a link in the description below. But farmer background gives you a unique assignment that speeds up agricultural building builds, which is what we have here in uh, uh, Yemen. And uh, burn trait obviously is great for the ammo boosting. Uh, we don't want to recruit any of these guys. I don't think they're anyone's, no one's really great. Yep, so we can just sit still. Obviously, if you see a legendary character pop up, recruit them. Uh, in many of my test runs, I have even gotten a game where there is a female strategist who got abandoned from Sun Jian's faction carrying the Imperial Seal available for recruit. That was that was a really weird game, but that was a fun start. Um, so we're going to go with this one for food plus 50 food production. It also helps build up Zhang Yan's level. Um, obviously, if you see a female general, uh, that could be Giant's wife, uh, preferably a commander. Grab that as well. Um, one type of character you have to watch out for are potential spies. And the faction that can send spies at you in the early game is Dong Zhuo. He's the only faction with high enough rank to use spies. So if you see a general from Dong Zhuo, you have to watch out. But other than that, we have nothing to do. We're going to chill. And we're going to wait till uh, turn 4 when we pick up our first reform to get another trade route to talk to Zheng Jiang. Alright, so Zheng Jiang comes out and offers us a non-aggression pack for money. We're going to wait. We're going to do this later once we get the trade route. We're going to negotiate all that together. Alright, we got our first building built. Uh, we got economy growth. So we got minus 1 construction time, minus 20% construction cost. We're going to abuse this a lot. Uh, we're going to abuse this three turns by rushing buildings, which is something we haven't really discussed in the game. We also pick up our next mission, which uh, is recruit two additional uh, units on the map. We don't have any unit right now, so we're at zero. So the game's only ask us to get two. You get increased replenishment as well as bonus experience. The trigger mission after this mission is uh, have a character on assignment. So the ideally, we want to have no army on the map until we can get both bonuses together because the reward for the assignment mission is 20% recruitment cost discount. So in theory, if we hold out to get both of these boosts together, we can recruit a full army cheaply and also enjoy the benefits of more replenishment and extra bonus experience for the units for three full turns. Uh, we'll explain that once we get there. Ooh, er, yeah. This is the first dictionary book in China. That's quite good, actually. We can replace his uh, right of draw with this because the 15% trade influence is actually relevant. Uh, some new characters, including a female commander. She has a grudge against former faction, or she got destroyed, so she's definitely not a spy. Um... Unfortunately, she doesn't have any good bonuses of being a leader in terms of trait or background. So I'm going to hold off on recruiting her as a wife. I think we can do better. Uh, not impressive. Not impressive. Not impressive. Okay, so we're still not going to recruit anyone. And I don't think any of them is wearing any items. Nope. So we're going to stay chill 
and we're going to start building buildings. So if you notice, these buildings all take quite a few turns, even with minus one turn. So we're going to build this, and we can rush it right away for 766. Uh, it's okay to spend this money here because we have a ton of cash and there's nowhere to spend them. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing again. And we're going to rush that again. And we kind of max this out before it reforms. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this land survey building. But we're not going to pump out 1,500. That's just too much. Uh, we're going to wait a turn. This cost decreases depending on how many turns are left. So let's continue. All right. Uh, this is the first spring turn, means we get a new reform. We're going to open this up. We're going to pick up Foreign Envoy for additional trade route. And we're going to negotiate that trade route with uh, Zhengjiang over here. We got another item. Okay, so these are all good trade assets. Um, not that useful. If he was a girl, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> but anyways, let's negotiate here. We definitely want a trade agreement. We definitely want non-aggression pack. This is not negotiable. We need both of this for the strategy to work. And we can give her as many auxiliary items as she wants. Um, because we don't need these. We only have one character. Uh, we definitely don't need a clay club since we have a right of Joe as well. And I think this is enough. Yep. We can also give her food. Um, it's also another option. Uh, we can't ask her for much money. I wonder if we can ask for any money. I don't think it will decrease enough. Any money? Oh, oh. $3. Well, that's 30. That's not bad. We'll take this. Alright, now we have two great friends who are not going to attack us. She's also going to do a lot for us. She's going to expand south. She's going to grab this empty commandery and pay the money to turn it into um, a usable commandery. And she's going to be our first target. Uh, eventually, before turn 30, she'll get antsy and she'll attack us. You can wait for that moment and turn on her without losing um, trustworthiness. Or you can just turn on her beforeward once you feel like you're ready. So we still have two turns of economy grows. We have plenty of money. We're going to spend a thousand gold to rush this at this point. And we're going to use the town upgrade right here. We're going to use uh, the rush next turn for another thousand and then we're going to build this one more time while we still have the bonus for this. So let's continue. All right. We are gaining a lot of ancillary items. It's kind of strange. It doesn't happen all the time. Uh, we're going to upgrade this. And if you look at our money situation, we have 7,230. Okay. So this costs us 2,400. We're definitely going to get this in before this disappears because there's a discount involved here. We can also upgrade this one more time, right? We can upgrade this. This will cost 2,000 and another 2,000 to upgrade. So this will leave us with 3,000 gold, more than enough for this. So we accelerate our build here. And this is a two turn build. Hmm. So this might not work. We can test it out. Okay, 666. That still in the, leaves us enough gold for this. So this is perfect. So the point here is just to accelerate your build as fast as possible. To get yourself as much money as possible. And then we do this. At this point, you don't need to rush anything. You can save up all your money because there's no point to rush. We're not getting additional benefits from discounts. Now is a process of saving up money recruiting excellent generals when we see them come into our pool and then planning out the, for the future. So let's continue. Oh, okay. So Liu Yu is offering us a non-aggression pack. They're willing to pay us for it. Um, obviously, we'll take this. Uh, this doesn't hurt us. And Gong Sun Zan declared war on Liu Yu, like we said. And he will slowly destroy Liu Yu, which will become a problem for us once Liu Yu get destroyed. So Gong Sun Zan is going to start attacking him, attacking him, attacking him. Once he sees us, he's probably going to want to attack us as well. You can bribe him with your items to get a, a non-aggression pack with him. Definitely, you can consider it since we are trying to play a super passive start. And let's continue because there's no new characters in the recruitment pool. 
And once again, no character, so we continue. Yeah, it seems really boring. Um, sometimes you get interesting characters, sometimes you don't. Uh, so each playthrough is a little bit different. Um, definitely not the only way to play Zhang Yan, and definitely not the, you know, I'm not saying this is the right way to play him, but I'm just offering this is one way you can go about it. Because um, if you expand down south, what happens is that you run into Yuan Shao, um, which is hard to deal with in terms of early game. He's quite powerful. Um, this is just a well, waited out type of strategy here as you build up. All right, the Del China event triggered, so Dong Zhuo is going to die soon. Ah, speaking of interesting generals, we have our first one. Uh, let's look at the other ones first. Uh, this is a bandit. Even though we are bandits, we don't really need this. Uh, we prefer farmers if we had it, but since we already built most of our buildings, we don't need a farmer at this point. Wang Hong. Um, nope, don't need him. Xia Hou Yuan will definitely recruit. We don't even need to look at him. Welcome to the team. Now, many of you would worry that he might be a spy for Cao Cao. Not the case. Too early in the game for Cao Cao to have ranked up from a noble to a second marquee, so he doesn't have access to spying. Uh, so what are we going to do with this guy? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Uh, well, he's definitely going to join our army in the future. Uh, we're going to give him some items for now. Maybe just the Iron Snake. All right, we can continue. All right, nothing's happening, but we can pick up a new reform. Uh, no new characters in the recruitment pool. So here's where things get interesting. You have a couple choices here. One choice, if you want to go heavy on developing your commandery building tall, you're going to need more uh, of the green reforms to get access to higher tier agricultural building. You need this one for level four pine, uh, the lumber yard you have. Uh, you need this one right here for level 4 land development. Uh, you need this one right here for level 5 government support. Um, as you can see, these all require a lot of reform. So I don't recommend this route because you're going to be wasting a lot of reform trying to get very minimal gains in terms of food, in terms of peasantry income. Another route is you can go heavy on this branch of the yellow reform. Go heavy um, tax collection building. This ruins your public order, causes ill turban rebellion to happen in your capital, and you can farm those for experience, which is not a bad way to go. And also, these are free buildings, so they're just technically free income for you. Um, this you can definitely consider. Uh, oftentimes, in a lot of our early game playthrough, we have dashed for this Silk Road expedition for the Onyx Dragon early game. Still a viable strategy. Although we don't have access to many commerce com uh, commanderies early on, uh, Taiyuan is a heavily industry commandery. So although we need some of these uh, reforms here, uh, these reforms here are largely wasted. And it's hard for us to build a school building right now. And range unit, like I said, doesn't perform that well in uh, ambush fights. What perform well in ambush fight are units with high charge. So often we're talking about cavalry units. And if you noticed, uh, we have a horse pasture in the north, and there are a lot of horse pastures in the north, all four of them. There's one to our east and three to our west. So going for a heavy military route is preferred. And the fourth building I recommend you to build in your starting commandery is the conscription building. So we're going to start out with regional commissioners here. This also gives you 8%. Uh, recruitment cost discount which is excellent for when you start getting an army and then we're going to move on to this uh, garrison conscript to get ourselves the level three and final conscript building also makes all the military buildings cheaper and then we're going to go this route we're going to dash for uh, retainer armies to get an upgraded cavalry and then we're going to go over here get our cataphract level four upgrade for horse pastures uh, this basically sets us up for the mid and late game. So that's my recommendation here. And uh, back to the game where nothing's happening because we are not getting new uh, recruitment pool. Uh, sometimes you get a lot of interesting characters, sometimes you don't. And you don't need that many characters. Um, you need maybe four. So let's continue. All right. So Dong Bai has succeeded Huang Fu Song as the High Empire. Interesting. Okay. Ah, speaking of interesting characters, we got Guo Jia as well. 
very very nice do we want him mm, not really he doesn't have any outstanding administrator traits we're gonna be picking up Guozia. right as you can see now you know your cha your character pool is getting much better compared to the early generals you started out with no one's bothering you just kind of consider this as an uh, alternative start date in terms of a campaign. Uh, we got a new building slot. We're going for government support. And we're going to build this building up. And then we're going to go upgrade this one more time. And then we're going to build the conscript building. Um, we have quite a bit of gold. Uh, we could consider just rushing this. But right now, everything seems very peaceful. Uh, Gong Sun Zan hasn't really made a move yet against uh, over here so we're not in a rush uh, by the way this is one of the horse pasture we're talking about um, and the other three are over here um, so we'll secure this one first secure most of the north and then move on to the west uh, that's our uh, direction in terms of expansion let's continue all right because of the deltran event don't has died and we has taken over good for him and we are continuing to upgrade this now as you see because of the building we have here, our public water is going down the drain. And that's okay, because the goal here is to actually have it go to negative 100, spawn army, destroy army, and build experience that way. Um, the only thing that we have to consider is that we might want to start rushing these buildings because we want to have the conscription building up so that we can train our army to get the experience. Um, since we have quite a bit of gold, I think what we're going to do is just rush this and start upgrading this so that we have a new building slot. We can wait a little bit on this this upgrade right here. I kind of want to shift over uh, to rushing this building. Mm, six turns for 4,000. Yeah, I think we can do it. And then we're going to go for the conscript building. We're still rich. Don't worry about it. We, we're we going to get a lot of gold just passively waiting. Let's continue. Uh, we kind of want to line this up uh, with the time when we get the next reform because we still need a, one more reform for level 3. So this will take one turn. This will take two turns and then we can build it. So there's three more turns. We're in harvest season right now. Uh, so the next season is autumn and then autumn, winter, spring. I think the timing will be just perfect. So let's continue. They want us to pay for military access. We're not going to do that. Reject. All right, let's see if we get any more interesting characters. Okay, so here, uh, Chen Gong is a semi-unique character, Master Magistrate. Um, but honestly, he's not very impressive as a general. He doesn't have a lot of cunning stat. Uh, he's a strategist, but no cunning stat, so it kind of makes him pretty bad. So I'm going to pass up on him. Hua Xin, however... If you see him, he's one of the few generals with Bruant. So we're definitely picking him up. Um, let's see the other guy. Level 4. Eh, not interested. Let's grab Hua Xin. Oh, he has a... Hmm, Chen Gong has an armor that we could give to him. But is it worth a thousand gold though? Maybe not. Let's grab him and we're going to upgrade this and that's it. Let's continue. Li Bu is offering us peace but asking the house so nope. All right, winter. Uh, we have Zhang Yan leveling up, which is great news. Um, it's a little flexible here. We can go for extra spear armor, which is nice, uh, and then eventually move our way to Binding Fury. And then move our way up and wiggle ourselves over here until we get Flame of the Phoenix. He has two damaging abilities. Since he's a unique character, he also got a unique skill tree, which is quite nice. Um, you got kind of a shifted version of a green and red tree, which is decent. So we're going to grab Trust and then we're going to work our way back. Alternatively, uh, you could go for Vengeance as well. It will slow you down getting Binding Fury because you don't have any damaging abilities yet. Um, but this gives you scare, which is quite good as well. But we're going to go this way. I kind of want Binding Fury. And we can just continue. 
All right, so there's a civil war in Lü Bu's faction, or Dong Zhuo as it still says here. They really should change this once Dong Zhuo dies. Do we have any interesting characters? Mm, not really. If you see Xun Yu, uh, X U N Y U, grab that general. It will be a semi unique character. I think his name is Hegemon's Aid. Grab him because he triggers an event that gets you Guo Jia, but in our case, we got Guo Jia already, so it doesn't really affect us. We have a new reform. We're going to pick up this one right here. Garrison Conscript. We're going to upgrade our building here. And once that's done, we can start recruiting a full army. And why do we want this? Because it gives plus start 3 starting rank. Um, which is, you know, obviously really good because you're getting a really efficient army in the beginning. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen any female generals uh, become available, so we haven't got ourselves a wife and get additional bonuses there. Uh, we're prepping for a potential um, battle coming up very soon as we're getting close to the point where our public water is going to negative 100. Uh, we can continue at this point. Han Sui and Liu Bu has gone to war. Sun Jian has died in the event. We got more. Ooh, this is good. This will slow this down a little bit. So Zhang Yan should pick this one up. And we should start giving items out to these guys as well. Guo Jia is coming out with us. Hmm. I guess you can take this for the replenishment. And you can grab this one for the dodge. There we go. Alright, next turn and we're ready to jump out, uh, pop out an army. Ooh. Ah, perfect timing. Zhang Jiang declared war on us. We're just about ready to start our army and fight her. So this is perfect. Alright, so Zhang Jiang declared war on us. Uh, this is turn 16. Um, so we've gone through quite a peaceful start. She usually uh, declare war on you once you get uh, three uh, commanderies. I think for her faction, it's a mission. Um, so she grabbed Taiyuan's Iron Mine. Taiyuan is an excellent commandery. Iron Mine Toolmaker, very, very good industry commandery. Uh, we're going to grab all this from her. Um, in this playthrough, Liu is doing excellent. Gongsuzhan hasn't wiped him yet, so we're going to turn our focus down um, south first, grab these land, and then uh, probably come into contact with Yuan Shao. So we're going to, ooh, Book of Ceremonies. Okay, another wonderful item. Uh, we don't have any wife material here, so we're going to pass up on these guys. And because we finished this building, we're going to raise an army. Ah, uh, I made one small mistake. We need to cancel this last turn. But we didn't, so he's going to miss out on this first fight. Uh, that's fine. We're going to have Xia Houyang come out. We're going to have Guo Jia come out. We're also going to recruit him. But we're going to pop him into a separate army. So we have two generals with Burrent. So... In this case, any fight we fight in this commandery, in this county that we're in, we're going to get 30% extra ammo for all our unit, and the enemy is going to get minus 60% ammo for all their unit. If you can get more burned officers later on, just stack them on, and the enemy will have fights where they never have ammo, which is just broken. Um, we're going to pop him into a separate army. Because we're going to have Zhang Yan come in here. We're going to get rid of his uh, retinues. Because the only thing we want him for is for the burned buff. So we can pull him to the side a little bit. For these guys, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to swap unit. Because all the units we can recruit are higher level. But because we want the same unit, so we have to actually get rid of these. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. Alright, deleting these guys, and just slow down the replenishment rate a little bit. These two, we can play around and um, change them into swap in into trebuchets. 
Hmm, actually... It'll be cheaper if we don't do this. Here. Um, we're gonna delete these. At end of this turn, what will happen is that we will have two units. We have technically three units on the battlefield right now. So we'll trigger that mission. We'll trigger, we won't trigger the assignment mission. So we need to recruit someone to do assignment. So actually he's hired because he's a champion. All right, so let's recruit Guo Si because we're going to need him to come in here and plant food for us to replace Zhang Yet. Yep, that, that works out. Okay, so we're going to build this and we're going to go to next turn. Okay, so Zheng Jiang is approaching us. We also got this uh, Yellow Turban Rebellion here. Not a real concern. We trigger this mission, which prompts an, uh, our next mission, send any character on assignment. The reward for this is 20% re, uh, recruitment cost discount. This is amazing here. Um, we also have a new mission where we have to hold four settlements. All right, we got a new character available. Not good enough to recruit. We're gonna send Guo Si on our uh, mission here to give us a little bit more food production because we're kind of lacking there too. We're gonna pop Zhang Ye into the army here. So these two guys don't get along together and that's actually fine because what will happen is that he will get a rivalry buff with uh, Xiao Hou Yuan eventually and they'll both have 40% extra attack damage in a fight. Uh, we don't have to actually fight them. They're actually going to help us deter these guys. Uh, we don't want to go into the settlement either because we don't... Well, I mean, we could now, but we don't want to get sieged out. We want to be able to recruit units, so let's stand outside. Because um, if she comes in and siege us, you know, we're inside, we can't recruit new troops. Um, we're going to wait for the assignment to kick in to get the 20% discount, and then we're going to pop out a full army. All right, let's continue. All right, so we gained this bonus. Oh, we're getting siege by the yellow turbans. Not an issue at all. Uh, we could automate this fight and win it if we wanted to. All right, this this army we can just automate and win with our garrison, but we don't need to do this right now. We can uh, withdraw first, yeah. We got the mission trigger for the recruitment call discount. We have the extra replenishment rate, and because we didn't stay in the city, we can still recruit. So here's where we pop out a full army and return the game to normal state, basically. So we're going to want probably four of these guys to start. We want two tribuches, and then probably just go with archers rather than crossbow units. Do we have fire arrows? We don't. So technically, we... Mm, I... I guess maybe we could technically go crossbow unit. Hmm. This is a debate that you can decide. Because we don't have archers. We have archer militias. Let's start with archer militias. We can always switch them over later. And here we're obviously going with uh, lance cavalry militia. And because of the discounts we're getting 20%. It's rather cheap. So let's just full stack these guys all right so this is our army uh we're not gonna move them we're gonna stay here and get replenished it'll take three turns uh Zheng Jiang might come attack us but we're, we're fine this guy can hide a little bit he just need to remain within the county the whole purpose of his existence is to just boost the burns and getting sieged by this uh, rebel is actually helping us because What's happening right now is they can't siege us because we're already getting siege. So they have to fight them off to be able to fight us, which is kind of funny. Um, I don't think there's any interesting characters to grab. Chen Gong's back again. I wonder if he worked for someone and got kicked away. No, no one recruited him. Okay, uh, that's it. Let's continue. Uh, our also, as long as the rebels are on the map, our public order is recovering 
at 20 a turn. Uh, we could wipe them out and revert this because we can farm these guys over and over again. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that. We saved our money for this moment uh, for losing money as we have a giant army. But very soon, we're going to conquer all these land with this army and turn all this around. So no problem. All right, Liu Yu wants military access with us, not paying us anything. Reject. Alright, Zheng Ziang declare war with Han Fu. Uh, one of the stupid missions. That's gonna cost us another 500 gold. Kinda bitter about that. So here, uh, we could go with this for mustering turns, bonuses, or we can just go here for military supplies and work our way through here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're kind of the same. Our goal is similar. We're trying to go for uh, this one right here. We're trying to go for this one right here. So let's get let's get this first. Maybe it'll help out the mustering. Uh, I'm not sure if it will, but we're gonna be in fighting shape in one turn. Zheng Jiang can't siege us, so she just walked over here. She also can't walk through them, so this is this is funny. The rebellion's actually helping us. Um, Although we are losing some income because we're getting sieged, but that's something we can't help ourselves. So let's continue. All right, we got a bad event that's causing us to lose food, but can't do anything about that. That's just chance. Got a new item. Uh, what happens is that Zheng Jiang walked away uh, during that turn, so we can wipe out this rebellion now. Uh, let's give him an item. All right. Let's fight. Uh, we can just delegate this fight. Got an item. Uh, got more money. Alright, now, uh, from this point on, we're going to be playing this game quite straightforward like you would play uh, any of your regular game. So essentially, we just change the start date from summer of 191 to summer of 194. Uh, we spent 20 turns being very passive, and now uh, we're going to start marching out towards Zheng Jiang. Uh, we're going to have this guy march back. He's uh, going to follow the uh, Zheng, uh, Zhang Yan's army. Just be in the county that you're going to be fighting in, and the Burns boost would be in effect. Um, so our goal next is to take out Tai Yuan, wipe out Zheng Jiang's army, grab all her territory. She probably has taken uh, Xi He over here. Take it from her, use the river as your boundary, and then start turning attention to Zhongshan. And uh, eventually, I hope Gong Sun Zan is strong enough to wipe him out. But if he survives, just betray him or cancel the deal and wait 10 turns. Whatever your take is on, on trustworthiness. But from this point on, I think it's pretty straightforward as we have a very nice base, very nice army, uh, very nice generals, and uh, we're just going to be conquering commandery by commandery. So that's our early game playbook guide for Zhang Yan. Uh, once again, this is not the only way or the correct way to play Zhang Yan. This is just offer you one way where you can uh, play extremely passive. Uh, basically, I don't like the generals you start out with, so you can nitpick and get different generals. And I can promise you this is not the best lineup I have gotten in many of my playthroughs. So hope you guys enjoy this guide and uh, let me know in the comment section how you play Zhang Yan and whether you want to give this faction a try. And uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys on the next early game playbook guide. Bye!